Hi, I'm Extension Entomologist Blake Layton and this is Gardening Through the Seasons for July. Today we're going to talk about fire ants because no matter where you garden in the state, you're going to have to deal with fire ants. Ignoring them and hoping they'll just go away on their own won't work. I've tried that in my yard from time to time and can assure you it doesn't work. One of the best ways to deal with fire ants is to use one of these granular bait products. Now these are applied preventatively and they've got a lot of advantages. They're cheap, they're easy to apply, they're safe to pets, and they really work. The only disadvantage the baits have is that they take a long time to work. Uh, depending on which bait you can use, it can take anywhere from two weeks to two months for the, you to see the full benefit of a bait application. So that lets you know right there the best way to use baits is to apply them preventatively. And what I recommend here in Mississippi is to apply them two to three times a year. If you live in an urban setting, twice a year may work fine, but if you're like me and you live in a rural setting, you may need to make three applications per year, and I use the calendar and the holidays to help remind me of that, Easter, 4th of July, and Labor Day. Of course, we're here in July now. That is actually the least important of the times to apply bait if you're going to have to leave out one. In an urban setting, you'd want to focus on spring and fall. But what does happen in July is if you're mowing your yard, it's hot and dry, the mounds aren't visible. They're not sticking up above the ground, but they're still there, and that July application can be very helpful in keeping those mounds suppressed as you move into the fall of the year. That fall application is also important. You might think, well, winter's coming and they're gonna become inactive anyway, but the reason for that fall application is to reduce the number of mounds you see popping up in your yard the following spring. So in summary, the best way to use these fire ant baits is to apply them preventatively two to three times a year using the holidays, Easter, 4th of July, and Labor Day to help remind you that it's time for that bait application. Now the rate for these fire ant baits is very low, usually in the range of one to one and a half pounds per acre, and that's not very much bait. So you don't want to put these in your fertilizer spreader and try to apply them that way. And you don't want to apply fire ant baits by just applying them to the tops of mounds you can see. Instead, use one of these handheld seeders. There are a couple of different brands out there, and what you want to do is set it on one of the lowest settings, and then walk over your yard just spreading the bait. The ants will do the rest of the work. The foraging workers will collect the bait granules, and then they'll carry them back to the mound and feed them to the older larvae, which will convert those bait granules into liquid that will then be spread through the colony. So this is one reason that you want fire ant baits to be formulated with very slow acting products. You don't want it to kill that fire ant worker as she's carrying that bait granule back to the colony. Now if you use those bait treatments preventively two or three times a year, you're gonna get about 80 to 90% control. But that means you're still gonna have some mounds that survive the bait treatment and you're gonna to have to deal with those in some other way. And there are two basic ways of doing individual mound treatments. That's where the individual mound treatments become important. One way is to use these liquid drenches. Now these are gonna be messy and time consuming to apply. So the method, method I prefer is to use one of these dry powders. And I recommend that most homeowners keep a can of one of these products on hand just when you see a mound when you're out doing yard work or mowing or playing in the yard or whatever, you can spot treat that mound at that time real quick and easy to do. The first thing you need to do is read the label and see how much powder it tells you to use per mound and then simply sprinkle that amount of powder over the mound and be patient. Now in this case, the label calls for one tablespoon, but some products only require a teaspoon. Depending on which treatment you use, that mound should die out in three days to three weeks. Products containing acephate provide the quickest control, but acephate has a bad odor that persists for a long time. So if you do a lot of outdoor entertaining, this might not be the product to use right next to the deck or the patio or the grill. Products containing delta methrin or cyflutherin take longer to work, but they don't have that persistent, objectionable odor that acephate has. Well, sometimes you've got a mound that's just in the wrong place and you've got to get rid of that mound as quickly as possible. And this is where the liquid drenches come in. Liquid drenches are time consuming to mix and apply, but if you use a liquid drench properly, you can kill a mound in 24 hours or less. The key to success with drenches is to use enough liquid to thoroughly soak the mound. Now on large mounds, this can take two gallons of drench or more. And what you want to do is start by applying about a quarter of that drench in a circle immediately outside the mound and then pour the remaining drench over the mound. There are a lot of different insecticides out there that have directions on their label for how to apply them as a mound drench. 
I usually recommend products that contain either permethrin or carbaryl because these products are easy to find, they're quick, they give quick control, and they have a lot of other uses in and around the home landscape. Well, in summary, what you want to do is knock out fire ants using a one-two punch. What you want to do is use granular bait supplied preventively as the foundation of your fire ant control program. Then keep a can of one of the dry mound treatments on hand to spot treat mounds that the bait treatments miss. Resort to the liquid drenches only for mounds that you need to kill immediately. Well, we've covered a lot of information in a short period of time, and you may want to review some of the details. The publication Control Fire Ants in Your Yard covers the information we covered today as well as gives some of the specific products. For even more detailed information on fire ant control, go to our fire ant website at www.msucares.com and you'll even find information there on fire ant biology. Well, this has been Extension Entomologist Blake Layton and this has been Gardening Through the Seasons for July.